All right, welcome back to Knack for Middle School, Force in Motion, Grade 6, Science. We're taking a look today at Goal 8. Goal 8 says students will solve for work in the equation work equals force times distance. And will recognize that force and distance must act in the same direction in order to produce work. So there's really two parts to this goal. First one is solving for work, using the math, using the formula to solve it, label it correctly. The second part is realizing that there is a relationship between work and distance, and that distance being in the exact same direction as the force. So let's talk about the definition. In scientific terms, work means that you exert a force on an object to move it some form of a distance. Work is done on an object when the object moves in the same distance in which the force is exerted. If the object does not move in the direction you applied the force, no work was done. I'll say it again. If the object does not move in the same direction you apply that force, no work is actually done. Let's take a look at this. So here we have a, uh, a shopping cart and somebody pushing that shopping cart. You'll notice the distance and the force are going the exact same direction. This will give us actual work we can calculate. This situation is a little different. If he pulls on the tree, does the tree pull back? Does the tree do any work? Well, does a tree move a distance? Maybe not. And if he stands still, does he do any work? Well, he doesn't move. So if he's no distance, there's no work. Let's take a look at this picture. This is a great picture. Because you see the guy is holding a, a bag of groceries, and he's carrying that a distance in this direction, yet he's pulling up on the bag, or pushing up, applying a force on the bag. So you see the force is up, the distance is to the right. Is work being done in this example? The answer is no. So in order to do work, son, the force you exert must be in the same direction the object moves. In order to calculate that, we use this triangle. You've seen this before. Work is W, F is force, D is distance. When we calculate work out, we end up with what is called the letter J, a joule. That is one newton meter, one kilogram meters per second squared, okay? Meters squared per second squared. That whole thing equals a joule. Obviously, this is just way too hard to, to document, and write, and communicate. A joule is much easier, so we'll be using the, the phrase joules a lot. Let's take a look at a quick video here. Standard unit used to measure work. 
one joule of work is done when a force of one newton moves an object one meter. Do you have any idea how much a joule of work is? I know. Let's take an apple. Which weighs about one newton. It's now, ironic. If you lift the apple from the floor to your waist, which is about one meter, you do one joule of work on the apple. I do find that interesting that uh, the joule is the amount of energy required or work performed when applying a force of one newton over a distance of one meter. And the funny thing was is that a newton is actually roughly about the same amount of weight as an apple. And of course the apple was what fell on Sir Isaac Newton's head. Kind of crazy how it all comes together. And this little guy down here in the corner, that is Mr. Joule. I thought you'd like to know that. All right, so here's your sample problem. Let's see if you can calculate work. So here we have a box. It weighs 50 newtons. And we're going to move it 10 meters. And I want you to calculate the work. If we look at our formula, work is equal to force times distance. The force is 50. The distance is 10. 50 times 10 newtons times meters. Have you figured out what the answer is? Let's see if you did it. Work is force times distance, 50 times 10 equals 500. 500 newton meters is also known as 500 joules. So we would write the answer as 500 and then a capital letter J. So that is goal eight. You learned about how you can solve for work using the equation force times distance. And hopefully you recognize that force as well as distance must act in the same direction to produce work. Let's check out a video to send you out. It's what I would call a throwback. Yeah, old school video. Eureka! Eureka! A story so far. Mass refers to how much stuff a thing contains. Weight refers to the rate at which that amount of stuff is being accelerated towards the Earth. In other words, weight is just another way of saying force of gravity. An object's mass never varies, but its weight can go up or down depending on the force of gravity acting on it in various parts of the universe. And now, work. These barbells have a mass of 120 kilograms. Since they are resting on the surface of the planet Earth, we know that the force of gravity acting on them is about 10 times that number of newtons. It takes a very strong man to lift something that weighs so much. Because if the barbell is being pulled down by a force of 1,200 newtons, it must take 1,200 newtons of force to hold it up. Of course, if we were on the moon, where the force of gravity is only one-sixth that of the Earth, Anybody can do it, but we're not on the Hmm, that looks like hard work, but how much work? 1,200 newtons worth to lift the barbell? Mm, how far? Exactly two meters. Hmm, but what if you only lifted the barbell half that distance, say one meter? Surely that doesn't take as much work as lifting the barbell two meters. When you lift the barbell all the way up, you're doing 1,200 newtons times two meters worth of work. When you lift it only halfway up, you're doing half that amount of work. 1,200 newtons times one meter. In fact, this is how you measure work in physics. Work equals force times distance. Here you're doing 1,200 newton meters of work. And here you're doing 2,400 newton meters of work. Newton meters! That's simple enough. But suppose that after the show, the strong man discovers that his car is stuck in the mud. Oh, no. He pushes it and pushes it. But it won't budge a millimeter. And suppose that at the very same time, the clown, who hasn't got a car, is in the act of picking up the telephone to call a cab. Which of them would you say is doing work at this particular moment? The strong man or the clown? The clown. Because work equals force times distance. 
And although the telephone receiver only weighs about two newtons, while a strong man's car weighs perhaps 15,000 newtons, <clears throat> when he lifts the telephone receiver, the clown is applying a force of two newtons through a distance of 50 centimeters, let's say, or half a meter. And therefore, no fractions. two newtons times half a meter of work which is one newton meter of work. The strong man, on the other hand, may be exerting thousands of newtons of force. But since the car is not moving, there is no distance involved, and the poor man isn't doing any work at all. A force of even thousands of newtons times zero distance equals zero work, whereas a force of only two newtons through a distance of only half a meter does equal some work, even if it's only one newton meter worth. But it's a bit awkward to keep on talking about newton meters of work. So physicists have borrowed the name of a famous British scientist, James Prescott Joule. Joule! As the measure of work. One joule is the amount of work done when one newton of force is applied through a distance of one meter. That's to say that one newton meter equals one joule. Which can also be written like this. So the clown did one joule of work when he lifted the telephone receiver. And the strong man did 2,400 joules of work when he lifted the barbell. But of course, when he tries to move his car, it's a different story. He does zero joules of work. <laughs> 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 